Hello again. This is my follow-up video to the Creating a Specific Screen tutorial. This is going to show you how to map that specific screen to a specific classification within the incident or service request. This is also done from within a blueprint, so again, you'll want to be in your orange pill or admin tool and create a new blueprint. Now, from our last video, you see that we have this specific screen called Remove Access, and this is for basically a request to remove access to an application for an employee or user. Now, while we already have the specific screen defined, we have no way of populating that screen into an incident or service request until we map it. Uh, now, mapping is done through one of the many managers within Sherwell. So while you're here in the blueprint, you'll see up in the left on the menu bar that there is a whole list of managers. You've probably used some of these, most likely the dashboard manager, maybe the calendar manager. But what we're going to do today is deal with group maps. Now, out of the box, Sherwell comes with a group map for specific screens. So we click on that, and we actually see the map right here. Uh, what you want to do is you want to edit that, and you can do that you know, from here, from here. You can right-click and click Edit. In any case, you want to bring up the group map editor. Now, what you'll see here is what we're mapping, what we're mapping it to, and the fields that we're using to map the specific screen. So in our case, we're mapping specific screens to the incident object. We're using the service as the primary field and the subcategory as the secondary field. Now, as you can see, again, out of the box, there are a lot of maps already defined for existing specific screens. We're going to actually create a new one today. And the way we do that is we click on the New Row button here next to the mapping list. And you will see down at the bottom the values that we need to populate. In our case, uh, the first thing we want to do is figure out what the service is. That's our first map field. So we can bring up a list of valid uh, values for that field. Uh, in our case, this is going to be an account management service. So we select Account Management, and in va the value for Field 2, which is going to be the subcategory, again, we're going to bring up the legal values. What I like to do is just to make it easier is I'll just drag the service up here into the Group By column. So, okay, now we look at our Service Account Management. We have a whole bunch of stuff in here. And what I want to use is for Remove Access or Permissions. Now what this means is that when we classify a ticket, or a service request within Sherwell as having the primary service account management and the subcategory of remove access permissions, we want to actually map the specifics screen that we just built. So now we get a drop down list of all the available screens within the specifics group. What we're doing is a remove access. This is the one we just built, and we add it there. Now uh, we click OK here, and that's really all there is to it. We'll close this down, and now the Remove Access Specific screen will be mapped to that classification. So what I want to do is go ahead and publish this blueprint. Great. And now we'll go ahead and open our blue pill. log in. And now if I want to go ahead and create a new incident or request in this case, again we are looking at out-of-the-box forms here. The most important thing to do here is to look at the classification here. Now what was the service? The service we're talking about is account management. Now, there is a whole slew, there are categories involved with this, but let's go ahead and talk about, I'll say Sherwell Self Service, and oh, take that back. We're going to talk about network access, and the subcategory we want is remove access and permissions. Now, what you're going to see is the specific screen that we created. Now that actually populates here in this in the fulfill the service request area with all of the form fields that we selected. Uh, those form fields can be utilized in one steps within the incident. 
They can be mapped elsewhere uh, down into other related uh, related objects within the system, uh, but what you now have is essentially any time this classification is selected, this specific screen will populate. Uh, now you actually have a ability to add any name from your customer list. I don't have any, so uh, it's empty at this point. Uh, I get to select an application. Now this could be a validated field. That's entirely up to you. I don't have it validated currently, but you know we could just call this, you know. Uh, MS Exchange. Say I have a due date of you know June 20th, and I have to provide. Maybe I provide some details, but I don't have to. Again, these fields could also be made required for save if you wanted. Uh, specific objects, specific records are uh, just as powerful and just as configurable as any other object. They are simply created as an embedded form to the incident object. But that is essentially all there is to mapping specific objects. You can change the map anytime you want. It does require a, a publish of the blueprint. The group map manager is only available through the blueprint, uh, through a blueprint editor uh, within the admin tool. So that's about all there is to it. And thanks again for watching.